What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about going tubeless with some new tires for my Trek Marlin 7. Alright guys, so as you can see on the screen, I am looking at the Maxxis site here, at the different tires that they have, because I am looking to go tubeless on my Trek Marlin 7. I know previously I said I wasn't really going to be doing too many upgrades, but I did also say if I wore out the tires, I'd be upgrading them. And my back tire is starting to get a little bit worn out already. So I know I haven't posted too many videos, but I have been doing a lot of riding. So that back tire that I have that I've been kind of nailing the brakes and sliding around turns and stuff, it, uh, it's getting pretty beat up. Uh, so I figured while I'm getting new tires, why don't I try going tubeless? So this is going to be a new guy who's never done any of this before. I've never even changed a tire. And now I'm going to be going tubeless, so we're going to see how it goes. So this is part one of what I think is going to be about a three-part series. And then at the end of that, I'll make a real quick video that kind of takes all the pieces of these three into one video that shows a real quick what I ordered, which is this part right here. You know, unboxing, showing what I have, and then doing the actual conversion to tubeless. So this is part one where we're going to be looking at exactly what we need to order so for me there's a few things that i do have you need some stuff to clean the inside of the wheels so mineral spirits or something like that i have that already i'm not going to be ordering that but what we definitely need is that we need a front tire and we need a rear tire and that's because the tires that come on the trek marlin 7 are not tubeless ready plus i've worn out that back tire now the 2021 trek marlin 7 that i have came with bontrager connection wheels i believe which they say are not tubeless ready but i've seen people go tubeless so we're gonna see how this works out we're gonna see if it works well or not this could be a mistake either way i can always go back to a tube if i have to so that's not a big deal along with picking out my front tire and my rear tire as you can see i'm looking at maxes for that which we'll talk about in a minute i want to get a tire lever lever set so that i can easily take off the old tires or take off these tires in the future I need tape. We'll talk about the different options we have there and why I'm going with the one that I'm going with. Press the valves. Uh, a lot of people, if they're going a cheaper route, they basically cut the valves off of the existing tube. I don't want to do that because, like I said, if I do run into problems and I need to go back to a tube, I will just use the tubes that I have. So I'm not going to cut those up. And then we need sealant. Um, and depending on how I do this, I might also need a sealant syringe to make it easier to put the sealant in after I uh, get that bead for that tire set, rather than, you'll see a lot of videos where they pour it in beforehand, but I wanna make sure that I can easily set that bead, and then I wanna actually put the sealant in through the press the valve. So let's talk about tires a little bit, and let's talk about different sites that I'm gonna use. So basically what I did is I started doing research, and on YouTube, you'll see here that there's this channel called Worldwide Cyclery. And I found this just by looking up different tires, specifically Maxxis. They seem to love Maxxis. So if you actually do a search on here, for Maxxis, you will see a ton of results where they talk specifically about back tires, about front tires, about all the different combinations, about uh, basically everything that involves Maxxis. And sometimes I believe that they touch on some of the other brands and I looked at some of the other brands also. I've just decided to go with Maxxis. And that's one thing that I wanted to bring up is that I'm going with Maxxis because I want to go with kind of a tried and true setup that other people have used because I'm pretty new to this. So I'm not trying to experiment and try new things because I'm just getting used to the feel. So I'm going to go with uh, my rear tire is actually going to be a Maxxis Recon. And my front tire is going to be a Maxxis DHR2, which seems to be a pretty common setup. I mean, no matter what setup you go with, you're going to find people that hate it and people that love it. So this seems to be one that a lot of people have used and say are pretty good. So the Maxxis Recon in the back, which is this tire right here. And I had, so the wheels that come on there are 29 inches and I'm gonna go with a 29 by 2.4. You know, I went back and forth with going with a 2.3 or 2.4, but the tires that I wanted to get, it's easier to get them in both, both of them in 2.4. So the Recon I'm going with because it's a little bit of a faster tire in the back. Supposedly it's still pretty good for climbing. It's still light and it still rolls pretty quickly, uh, which makes it a good tire to kind of make that transition. And then in the front, I'm going with a DHR2 because the DHR2, 
The tread on it is a little bit deeper, gives you a lot more grip in the front for getting into those turns and everything. Um, but again, both of those are gonna be 29 by 2.4. Now, also with Worldwide Cyclery and their YouTube on their webpage, they actually have this great guide here, which you can see one of their videos right at the top. But if you go through, along with picking out the size tire, uh, the model tire, which we'll talk about at the end of this again, you need to understand the different casings that Maxxis offers, which is basically um, how thick or how many plies of rubber the tire is. It goes from a single ply, dual ply, their XO, XO plus, double down and downhill. And this is basically gonna be kind of how thick the rubber is or how many plies of rubber the tire is um, to make it a stronger tire. But as it becomes a stronger tire or less puncture proof or more puncture proof, <laughs> um, it becomes heavier and doesn't roll as fast. So for me, I'm gonna be looking for extra protection but something that doesn't make it too heavy. So this EXL or the XO protection that they have here is exactly what I'm looking for. They also look at it based on the amount of travel on the front wheel. So as you know, the Trek Model 7 that I have is about 100 millimeter wheel travel. So I'm gonna be sticking with the EXO protection also. I'm not doing any kind of crazy, you know, downhill with my bike. And <laughs> if I get to that point, then I'll be getting a different bike, right? <laughs> so beyond that also, and this is a nice image here between the XO, the XO Plus, and the Double Down, where you can actually kind of see a little bit about how the tire is made, the makeup of the tire and the rubber. So beyond that, they talk about the rubber compounds. Um, so, you know, you have your dual compound uh, and then your 3C, which is the max speed, max tear, and max grip. So basically the rubber from dual compound, that's going to be one of the hardest ones. So that's going to make it so that your tire doesn't wear out as fast, but it also doesn't uh, kind of hug the ground, I guess you could say. I don't know exactly how they word. I read this before, but um, basically, uh, you know, as the, the tire gets softer, it wears out faster, but it also grips much better. So for my rear tire that, you know, I'm gonna be, you know, it does a lot of the work for climbing. I'm gonna get the dual compound on the Recon. And then on the DHR, I'm gonna go with the 3C Max Terra, not the Max Grip, but the Max Terra, which is most commonly used on trail and enduro bikes, it says. Um, when you get to the Max Grip, it's most commonly used on downhill. Uh, I'm not running downhill, like I said before. So basically dual compound for, the Recon in the back and the 3C Max Terra for the front tire to give me extra grip up front on those turns, really leaning in. Uh, and that's what I think is gonna be best for me to start out with. And we'll see how it goes, obviously. I'm gonna be letting you guys know what I think. So beyond that, they talk about the tread pattern. So this is where you can actually get into the tires again. Um, so the Recon is on here. The uh, uh, DHR2 is on here. Now, some of the other tires I did look at when I was looking at was the Aggressor and the dissector um, so you guys can take a look at those there's also the dhf for the back um, there's some other ones that a lot of people like there's some newer tires but i mean you gotta have to watch videos i mean i, I kind of <laughs> this took me probably a month because i was going back and forth on what i wanted i probably should just pick something because as you know people have said no matter what i get it's going to be better than the tires that are on there now because that back tire is pretty worn out so beyond that beyond the tires uh, like I mentioned, you know, I need that uh, the, the lever set to kind of get the tires off. I need to get tape, press the valve, sealant, and then a sealant syringe possibly. So the tape, let's talk about the tape. And that's uh, a lot of people are showing online now that they go with Gorilla Tape, which isn't specific to mountain biking. You know, Gorilla Tape is just a really good tape. And they say that it works really well on the wheels. And they say that they use it because it's cheaper also. And I was going to go that route. Um, along with that, the Presta valves, they said, hey, just go on Amazon and get some Amazon valves, uh, the Presta valves. And I looked at those. There was the Amazon, uh, there was a brand, it's like BWSHLF or something like that. And I'll show you these shopping carts in a minute. Um, and then I was going to get the standard uh, Stans sealant um, and then just a sealant syringe from KOM. Um, so you'll see that here. So here's the two tires. Now, one of the problems I ran into on Amazon is that the 29 by 2.3 for the Minion DHR, which isn't the right size, I couldn't actually find the, um, the, the tire with the proper specs on it in the Minion DHR uh, at the proper size. So I couldn't get the 29 by 2.4 from here anyway, but it's the same price you'll see as Worldwide Cyclery. Um, Here's that sealant syringe, 
the stands, no tubes, tire sealant. And then here's those press the valves and the Gorilla Tape. And basically people say, hey, if you go with the Gorilla T Tape, it's gonna be much cheaper. I also really like Pro Bike Tool, as you guys have seen with uh, previous videos that I've done of their products. So I was hoping to go with their tire levers, levers here. Um, they were $9.99 for three. But then I went on to Worldwide Cyclery because basically they've been a huge help you know, without even knowing it, because they put these videos up, they have this guide here and everything. And when I went on here, if you, if you go back here and you look at the total price, it was two fourteen eighty five, right? And you'll see that these the, the tire price are the same, 78 and 67. When you look here, you have 78 and 67 here, but I got this to a total price of two eleven ninety eight, which is a couple bucks cheaper. Um, ended up going with the park tool set here because that's just what they had they didn't have the pro bike tool on here otherwise i would have picked that it's a little bit cheaper but you still only get two but the big thing here was this muck off ultimate tubeless kit so with the tubeless kit with the supposedly you know mountain bike specific uh tubeless tape um, which i'm not really sold on i think the gorilla tape would have been fine but with this in a, as a kit um you know it comes with the tape it comes with the pressed valves um really nice pressed valves you know with an actual name brand on them so there's some kind of backing i would hope that the warranty would be a little bit better if i have any issues and then it comes with these two packages of the tubeless sealant which these screw right onto the pressed valves to fill so you don't need the syringe i'll probably end up getting a syringe in the future anyway if i continue to go tubeless um but this at $60, as you guys saw, along with everything that I needed, actually came in a little bit cheaper. So I was going to go with Worldwide Cycle. I keep saying this wrong. <laughs> I've said this wrong like 20 times. Worldwide. Oh my God. Worldwide Cyclery. I, I was going to go with them no matter what, even if it was a few bucks more expensive, because all their information was so helpful. But I found it really interesting that in the end, these guys did come in at a much better price. Well, not much better, but I mean a better price, right? So it made sense. Now, I understand with Amazon, you might get that two-day shipping, and this might take a little bit longer um, for it to ship, but I think that these guys definitely deserve your business because of the work that they put in uh, rather than, you know, uh basically paying the same price and getting two days shipping you know you know wait wait the three to four days or whatever it is and you know put the money into a company that deserves it because they're giving back to the mountain bike community so awesome job guys i really appreciate it um i put the order in today already so even though this cart is here i actually put it in and i might have put in one or two extra goodies of things i'm gonna put on the bike so I appreciate everybody watching. Like I said, this is part one of probably two or three parts of me going tubeless, you know, a brand new person who's never done this before. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe you'll see some of the mistakes and learn from it, or maybe we'll just make it through and we'll show how easy it really is to do. Um, I, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I think this will be a lot of fun. Like I said, I, there, there's one or two other goodies that I ordered on here. So we'll be looking at those also. Hopefully the next video is going to be an unboxing and that'll be based on when uh, when everything gets here and when I can uh, film that. So I appreciate everybody watching and look out for part two. Talk to you guys soon.